Um, so for casting, we, we went over there with uh, the only the only parts cast were uh, our, our characters and and uh, Brent's mom, who we hoped when we got there would agree to be in it. Um, otherwise, we had no ending for our movie, uh, and she was nice enough to do it. But um, after we'd been there about two days, and we just put up ads, um, and people responded in, in Japan and came and, and auditioned for us. We saw a lot of a lot of wonderful actors, um, and. Uh, we found uh, Mariko, who plays Hiroko, the, the young student. Um, she was one of the very first people to come in, and she was great. We were immediately like, there she is. And uh, a few hours later, we saw another actress who would have been great, but was a little older. Um, but she was so good, we thought, you know, we said, we, that, that role was cast, but we'd like to write a role for you. So Hana, who comes in and serves the, the, the candy and stuff, she actually auditioned for the other character, but we, we, we wanted her in the movie. She was great. So um, we went home that night, or back to the office that night, and uh, wrote, wrote that scene so that she could be in the movie. Uh, and the same thing goes for the brother. Uh, it was actually in the script. It was uh, supposed to be her father that came in, and we didn't see anybody who we saw o older actors, but nobody who was intimidating. We wanted somebody that really put Ben back on his heels, and ideally was the minute you walked on screen, you, we wanted you to go, "Oh, this is going to be bad." <laughs> and and in, in Japan, you could walk around for days and not find anybody intimidating. Like it's like they're just not out there. So. They're all our size. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so anyway, so yeah, when this guy walked in, we were like, oh shit, what's this? This might be our guy. And uh, he, he auditioned and he did an amazing job. So, so we, were, we were immediately like, oh yeah, you're our guy. And then, like, even, even while we were shooting, you know, he was very intense and it was like. Yeah, he scared me. <laughs> yeah. So. And lastly, I'll just mention. I'll just mention real quick, and the gentleman who uh, who tries to befriend Elliot's character oh, yeah. uh, in the bar. Um, oh yeah, we, we cast we cast uh, his boss as well. Came in and uh, and read and was very funny and uh, very strange and, and one of a kind. And we thought, yeah, that'll that'll work. We'll get some laughter at him. And uh, and lastly, the gentleman, uh, the Caucasian gentleman in the bar who starts to talk uh, to Elliot. Uh, that is our director of photography and uh, producer Dan Adelson. <laughs> so, we're like, we need a white guy. We need a white guy. <laughs> Anything else? That's good. How about you? One more? Jen. Jen. Uh, filming in Japan, how complicated or not complicated was it with permits and things like that? Yeah. And also work into that, your fixer. Okay. Our fixer. Well, um, I understand shooting in Japan with permits is extremely difficult. Oh. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we, did have, uh, we did have permits for some stuff and then, you know. Some stuff we, we didn't, some stuff we shot on the fly and we kind of didn't, didn't, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, um, I mean, there's certain stuff that you're like, well, obviously they don't have a permit for this part. But then there's other stuff we had, you know, we had spoken to, you know, the people at the place and we had talked to them and, you know, we set up certain locations ahead of time and they were great about it. And then other times we were asked to leave and, and like, we left and then came back and sh shot more. And then, but, um, yeah. The subways were the hardest. Yeah. You have a camera in the subway, they're not, they're not fans of that. But. So we had this gentleman that uh, is, a, is an, an Emerson film student. He was born and raised in Japan, but was going to a uh, university in the States as a film student. And he was home for a semester. And when we posted an ad in Craigslist saying we need a crew for the film, out of like the heavens came this Japanese kid who spoke English fluently, was a film student, and was looking for something to do for a semester. And we're like, <laughs> so, like, he became our fixer and he became really really resourceful because he was young he was like yeah I'll do whatever and like he was willing to talk to whomever and like get us into you know all kinds of trouble but he he really sorted out a lot of crazy crazy stuff for us and he did a ton of translating for us as well and, and oh and it's DJ American Gigolo oh so, yeah. he was our, our, fifth, uh, our fifth crew member he was our fifth crew member uh, Masaki Sakina. So if you're ever in Japan shooting and you need someone oh, amazing, <laughs> call us. We'll put you in touch with him. How long did it take you to film the fight scene? Um, that was choreographed in LA by a fight choreographer that we rehearsed. I mean, we had to rehearse the crap out of everything before going to Japan because we knew that everything was going to be like crazy you know, once we got there. As you know, so as actors, we were like, we have to rehearse everything. So. Uh, that was choreographed by a fight choreographer in, in LA named Annie Nuttall, and she uh, <coughs> she was great, and she worked with us, and we worked it, worked it, worked it for like 
you know, whatever, several hours a day for a couple days in LA. And once we had it nailed down, uh, we re-rehearsed re it in Tokyo so that none of us actually got stabbed or poked in the eye. And then, uh, and then the actual shooting, I think, was like three hours long, starting at like 3.30 a.m. or like 2.45 a.m. or something, and it was just like, it was freezing cold. And, uh, but we knew, you know, you know, it was a fight going on, and we knew it was gonna draw a crowd or whatever, unless we, so, yeah. It was like three hours or so in the middle of the night, freezing. 